please join me in welcoming the Director, Account Management of Verbal Connectivity, Gavin Gray. Thank you very much. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everyone. I think I've still got a home away notebook down there, Simon. So, uh, uh, so Verbo, it took me a while to be able to say Verbo as well, because it was VRBO for many years. So uh, I know your difficulty, Simon. Um, Verbo from US to Europe, um, and some differences in distribution strategies. So as Simon said, I'm Gavin Gray. I look after a small team uh, of account managers, and we look after our distribution relationships or commercial relationships with around 95 property management software companies globally and channel managers. Um, Avantio is uh, one of our preferred partners, uh, and um, I'm really pleased, and, and a big thank you to Cesar and, and the rest of the team for inviting us here in force, but then secondly for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to present a little today. So. so some travel trends that we are seeing, both in the US versus Europe, what our current travelers are really looking for, and then how you as property managers, for those of you that are, and I see a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of orange lanyards in, in the room, how you can improve your search position on Verbo. So what are we seeing in the marketplace? Um, anyone feel that they've, uh, they've lived this pandemic roller coaster for the last couple of years? Uh, hands up if you, if you do, because you know, I, I for one really recognise that at times we've gone backwards, we've gone forwards, steep rises up, steep rises downwards, but then also going forwards ultimately. And we have seen, I think, in our industry uh, and in our space, at least in trajectory going forwards that we feel like we're coming out of this pandemic, perhaps in a, in a better place than a number of our other tourism industry counterparts. So I guess we're familiar with this kind of story. The pandemic, restrictions lifted, different times, different places, we all know that. But pretty much everywhere there was some sort of pent-up demand for travel and for vacation rentals as part of it. Uh, and I guess this is the question here. It's like, well, if we focus here, what are we going to see next? What's in the crystal ball? Um, I, for one, probably think we're going to be heading more towards the, uh, the middle line here in terms, of, in terms of flattening. But what does the recovery tell us? So this chart here, the big line in the middle, 2019, the big black line, that was for global search volumes for vacation rentals, for our company in Q1 2019. And the bars that we see verti vertically are for what we are seeing at the end of Q1 2022. And you can see here two key bars above the line, vacation rentals and car rentals. A little bit behind, you see hotels coming up and creeping up, and air starting to surpass that in terms of bouncing back. Um, I guess any of you that have been around an airport in the last uh, weeks, days, months uh, uh, have seen some of the struggle that the air industry is, uh, is having, get its, getting its capacity back. Uh, uh, and I'm sure you've all been in the queues along the way or the cancelled flights, but it's coming back. And this is important because for many of the vacation rental growth that we're going to see, um, a lot, of the, a lot of the planning phase or the start of that is actually around growth in air. You know, think about our transatlantic uh, travel. Think about northern hemisphere travellers that are wanting to come down to here, the southern part of Europe, to enjoy the sun. Wouldn't want to be in cruise uh, at the moment. Um, clearly this slide was built by someone that didn't have to present it. Um, <laughs> um, the squiggles that you see here represent week-on-week -week search changes for European destinations. And the different lines represent different origin markets coming to Europe. I guess the key takeaway out of this is that we see slightly different patterns, although a very similar shape for all markets. Some of them caused by the pandemic and the impact of it coming at different times in different countries, different restrictions, different openings up. Um, you know, tragically, we've seen some of the impact of the Ukrainian situation uh, listed on here. One key takeaway, the massive spike in the middle 
for pretty much all markets, end of December 2021 and into January 2022. If you take one thing away from this slide, just know exactly that same thing is going to happen over here at the end of this year and be geared up for it because that's what we're seeing. A couple of really highlights just from, just from Europe that I'll take away. So these are vacation rental travel trends from our company, quarter two this year. Speaking to some Italian property managers this morning, relatively happy with the demand that they'd seen. We've seen a 15% year-on-year increase for vacation rentals in Italy in quarter two. London, where I live. Man, it's busy in London, for those of you that might be here from there. London has now come in globally to our top 10 booked destinations on Verbo for the first time ever. And I think this is a signal that people, firstly, travel coming back. US dollars uh, <laughs> hit a uh, pretty good uh, place against the pound if that's where you're getting paid out of, which I'm not. But uh, uh, we've really seen the US uh, you know, start to return, but then also... It's about not just wanting hotel-based experiences and vacation rentals in marketplaces being very key. Um, these are the top 10 book destinations on Verbo for European travellers. A couple of things stand out to me here. Any Disney fans in the audience? Disney is back, right? Florida, Kissimmee. Yeah? We're seeing a great return to some of the traditional Disney and Florida sun destinations. What also are we seeing? Paris and, and London, as I mentioned before, really bouncing back in terms of vacation rental style properties in those areas. And again, a dominance from the south of France there where a lot of our, our travellers are seeking the sun. Yeah? Great for those of you that have got southern European properties. Well, what's fueling that? Okay, interesting stat here. Might be a little bit hard to read at the back. The top line here shows the most downloaded travel apps in quarter two, so the quarter that's just finished, for this year on Apple devices. And Verbo is by far and away the largest travel app downloaded in that marketplace. And this is symptomatic of two key areas. One is around... Firstly, our, our company's drive, I guess, to, to want to get more of our customers involved in technology and embrace our technology and work with it. Secondly, I think it's our marketing team are really going after a new customer base and are driving hard towards it. And I think that we have seen some of this growth already transcend into, uh, into the European marketplace in terms of destinations this year. Well, what are we doing a little bit closer to home here in Europe? Um, any Liverpool fans in the audience? Please tell me not. Good. Um, <laughs> my marketing people won't like me saying this, but um, so, so Liverpool Football Club is one of our key sponsorships that is a company we've driven, but also the UEFA Champions League. Yeah? So we're getting in behind mega and large European events for the presence that it can give us in the marketplace. And we're following that up with a whole series of paid TV advertising campaigns that are really growing in the UK, in the Nordics, France, Germany. All of these key destinations to be bringing travellers down to southern Europe, where I know a lot of you have your properties. And again, in Germany, our brand in Germany, Favour Direct, 25th year anniversary this year. And... Uh, we're, uh, we're really driving that hard in terms of as a very trusted Verbo brand. Drive to destinations. These really kicked off during the pandemic. Yeah? And our company got in behind it because we were seeing so many searches for properties that were two, three, four hour drives away, both in North America but also in European countries. So this was something that was doubled down on by uh, our travellers. Some of our US uh, counterparts talk about a location called Dripping Springs that no one ever knew existed, but it was uh, uh, a vacation rental hub that grew during the pandemic because they were getting so much uh, short-term, oh, sorry, so much uh, uh, drive-to uh, demand to it. 
I would say two things to take from here is, one, a lot of these destinations that have sprung up, some of them will last. Our view is that a number of them will actually not last as people come out of the pandemic because we think the return to our traditional tier one destinations is something that will still happen. Who during the pandemic stayed in a vacation rental for a mix of work and leisure? Yeah, a few hands going up here, right? We're seeing a real phenomena as part of this during the pandemic, but I think we will see this continue through, especially as remote working uh, flexibility is available for a lot of us in the marketplace. Uh, this blend of pleasure, business leisure, or the flexcation, uh, we continue to see and we think will continue to roll on. Whoops, that went a bit quick. And then, I think this might come back to a chart. Press once more. Okay, this is more my kind of chart, um, a bit more simple. The black line, 2022, the green line, 2021. So uh, if we think about that chart before about the, uh, the flexible working and the, the vacation rental mix, it's like how are people geared up to satisfy our customers around that in terms of um, do you have great reliable Wi-Fi? Is there somewhere in the vacation rental where the traveller can literally work on a decent surface, take their Zoom calls, et cetera, et cetera, and work the day and then spend the rest of the day with their family. And therefore, as part of that, are people offering good longer-term rates to stay to satisfy that marketplace and make it competitive? I heard before in the Beyond Pricing um, uh, session about uh, perhaps ADRs in the UK being too high uh, this summer and being a detraction for, uh, for people staying. And it's about, well, are we competitive in that sort of marketplace? So this, what does this roll on to here? It's like, well, the stay lengths, we did see during the pandemic a little bit of a change in our length of stay, right? We've seen here a little bit more 2021 longer stays, seven nights, et cetera, whereas I think we are beginning to already see back to our main uh, uh, patterns around a lot more two, three, and four night stays already happening in the marketplace. Okay, two key stats here. 50% of our travellers say they want to take at least two leisure trips this year, and 54% want to spend more on trips than they did prior to the pandemic, okay? Which, judging by the way some prices are going, they're clearly going to need to. So how have Avantio's property managers done out of this? So Avantio with Verbo have around 600 partners live, 600 property management companies. Represents something 35,000 plus listings. And what they have done on, across that portfolio for H1 2022 compared to H1 last year, albeit a poor year, 144% growth. So we've seen some real growth in the Avantio portfolio. And I want to talk about some of the features that people are looking for today. I was in a, a great presentation earlier today by Sonia from home to go and I felt like she had stolen my slide deck because these were pretty much some of the, the features that were talked about as part, of, uh, as part of her presentation. I just want to touch on a few. These are the top amenity filters used by families on Verbo. And just remember that families and larger groups are the headpin space of our marketing efforts. Kitchens, televisions, believe it or not, high-speed internet Wi-Fi, parking, pets allowed. Kitchens, I think, and I think Sonia was right, represented by a whole new category of people that we are introducing into this uh, into the vacation rental market that are used to staying in hotels and they want to know that there's a kitchen, yeah? I'm going to talk a little bit more about amenities in a minute. High-speed Wi-Fi you will see coming up a lot. Great photos. This is no different if I was giving this presentation 10 years ago, right? 20 years ago. Oh, Simon's been around too long, but... Um, in North America... Properties with more than 30 photos 
Now remember, on our platform you can have 50 images, generate 63% of the revenues in the marketplace. Yeah? There's lots of space for great photos. Don't forget that you are competing in this marketplace with individual property owners that have, and often, the inclination, the time, and the need to go really deep with their great content. And especially if you've got bigger properties, make sure that you get your photo counts up, great images, hero images of the property, but then bedrooms, kitchens, bathrooms. This goes without saying about the high quality experience, yet I think a lot of people have lost this, and I haven't really heard too many people talk about this today, right? We're all here for one reason. I know we represent a lot of owners, but we are here before because of travellers, yeah? We're all travellers ourselves. There's a really telling stat here. 40% of our properties across our portfolio, a couple of million properties, have got 20 or more reviews. 40% of them. But that 40%, they drive nearly 70% of the revenue, yeah? So if you haven't got good reviews for your listings, start to drive them. Because these trust signals that are presented in the marketplace are really important for travellers. They're really important for us as well, as a company, and I'll tell you a little bit more of that uh, a little bit later. Flexible policies. The number one value to travellers during the pandemic, but coming out of it, the ability to get a refund if their plans change. This isn't all full refund day before check-in, but it's the ability for travellers to see that there is some flexibility with their booking if something happens. And this was an area that we really saw change during the pandemic. My personal view, I think a lot of this is going to stay as a legacy. Yeah? I don't think we need to be quite as flexible, perhaps, as we have during the pandemic, but I know that this is something that travellers have liked the taste of and will want to continue. Sustainability. Okay. This is a hot topic. And I think we've seen some of this in sessions that are already here today. This is truly the future of what we are going to see. It's about offering to our travellers places to stay that they perceive have some sustainable value. Three out of five travellers want to stay in a vacation rental that is exhibiting an effort around sustainability. And more than just that, our stats show that they are prepared to pay up to 38% more for their stay because of that. So what are some of the things that can be done? Well, clearly the investment to put solar panelling into vacation rentals is a pretty significant deal. Yeah? But the payback could be right for some specific properties. You know, we see here smart devices in the, in the homes to, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to give the view of, uh, uh, you know, economic heating and cooling of, of properties. I think we've seen here, you know, the, the, the lack of use of single plastics, etc. is it's kind of pretty much a no-brainer, but it's something that, that we're going to see across this space, especially as... Uh, we see a lot of holiday rentals or vacation rentals start to, uh, to offer more hotel-like uh, experiences, I guess. But there's a lot of good stuff here that we need to be across. And I want to talk about some things that you can do to immediately improve your search rankings. Well... This is an interesting slide because it basically tells us that things that used to be differentiators of your product are now just the norm. Okay, so look back to 2018, 39% of our listings were instant booking at that stage, and now over 90% of listings are instantly bookable. 
So think about what this might mean in terms of some of the next pieces I'm going to, to show. So these are the most popular property content filters that are used on Verbo. You might be surprised, but there is not a great deal of difference globally. In specific marketplaces, yeah, of course. So, um, you know, not everyone's got a pool or a hot tub, right? And a lot of our business is generated out of North America. But you will see here amenities, the way in which you describe rooms and spaces, how you put location types next to properties, are all very, are all very significant in our marketplace. We have 172 amenities available to hosts that they can choose to search with. And our stats show that on average, when a traveller is doing a search on Verbo, they are including seven amenities, on average, seven amenities per search. Yeah? And the simple reality is, if you've got some of these in your descriptions, brilliant. But if you haven't got the box ticked within your software, and Avantio feed us the information that they have about your properties, then you're not going to show up in search results when travellers are doing filters. So really important to double down on these as part of having great content. I said this before, but I'm going to put it back up again because I think this is an area that, as an industry, a lot of people don't do enough in. So we saw the stats about the 70% of the revenue. I think this is important in two ways. Firstly, it's the trust signal that it gives to a traveller when they are looking at your property and they're taking trust from all the content that you put in, that this stay is going to be as described, but it's also about what other experiences that travellers have had. That's great. That's great for your conversion rate on our website. What's important for that is, if you think about it from our point of view as a company, is we want to prioritise in search results those properties that we know are more likely to give great guest experiences because that brings people back to our properties or your properties, it brings them back to our site and it creates that flywheel effect. So that's why this review thing is so important because it will push your listings up in the search results. And then this relates to the premier host piece. So Premier Host, it's a, it's a tag that we put next to our best listings on our website. There's a Premier Host filter that lots of our travellers engage with to help filter out those properties that are giving the best experience. And by being a Premier Host actually gives the ability for our travellers, uh, sorry, gives the ability for our owners to, uh, uh, to use a free facility, a boost program, uh, that enables them to push specific listings up in our search results. This is key, and the key thing about this is there's various criteria that's involved to become a premier host listing or a premier host account. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to your Verbo account manager or come and see the, uh, uh, the team at the booth and they can tell you the, the full criteria for this, but reviews features really heavily as part of this. We typically say if your review score with Verbo is less than 4.3, out of five, we think you need to dive a little bit deeper into it. And you can work with your Verbo property manager to give some insights into that. Okay, I'm going to finish up here with one quick checklist. I said create a vision with your property content. And I really mean it because it's the best opportunity for you to tell that story about your listing. We saw some great insights in earlier sessions today around that and we've talked about some content, just remember you are dealing and you are competing against people with one listing that need to make it work and they're happy to put that effort in. Optimising your revenue, we've seen some good sessions today around tools that are available in the marketplace for optimising revenue. It's not just all about cutting your prices, yeah? It's about pricing accordingly to the market, to the time, 
but it's also weaving that element around flexibility around cancellations, etc. This is a no-brainer. Accept and honour all bookings. Please do that, not just on our channel, do it on every channel because it's the lifeblood of our industry. Requesting reviews I talked about, rate your guests if you've got the opportunity to rate a guest because that drives increased uh, reviews on our system. And then I've got here about cleaning policies and procedures. This hasn't finished with the pandemic easing. It's still something that's really demanded. We've heard that in other sessions here today, actually. And it's like, just make sure that the consistency of what you are delivering in that area matches up to the experiences that travellers are getting across a whole range of accommodation types. And there's going to be something new in this area coming up. So just make sure that when it does come through, that you're on it quickly and you're taking all the advice that you can. Then that's pretty much it from me for now. We've got our team at the booth. There's a lot of account management uh, expertise that's there to be able to ask uh, questions of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> thank you so much. You. I, somehow I, I really feel sorry for you because you know you have to have the same speech year on year and it seems we haven't moved, right? It's a big challenge, but I'm glad you're beating that drum and it's just amazing that we're still talking about amenities, we talk about photos, we talk about content quality, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Gavin. And you know, one thing I was thinking, can you imagine, you talked about London, can you imagine the Buckingham Palace becomes a short-term rental? How much your revenue you're going to generate? <laughs> anyway, that's maybe to a later discussion. A lot of rooms to clean. Well, you need this evening, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I have, we don't have a lot more time for, for, for questions, unfortunately, because you stuck to your time too well. Um, sustainability. So this is new on the list and I like it, right? Um, I'm, I am uh, on the board of one of the largest carbon offset um, companies in Switzerland for many years and sustainability is very close to my heart. Uh, you talk about different badges. So, you know, sustainability is a long conversation and we need to be very careful. We're not going to end up in greenwashing and stuff like that. And you said, you know, two, th what, three out of five on a sustainable property. You know, we have to be very careful that we're not putting a lipstick on a, on sure. a, on a, on a four-legged animal because sustainability, we also need to, we can't just talk about it, we also need to make it happen. Does Verbo have any intentions to build like a sustainability batch that you that you you can you can showcase yeah, well, uh, properties that are sustainable. Yeah, one of our um, one of our stats showed that 54% of uh, travellers want to see uh, the the ability for a listing to show their sustainability uh, credentials. So um, I think that that's something that we're going to take a lead from the wider Expedia group on uh, and uh, and look to do that. But yeah, I would th I would think that that will be something that we would see. Uh, in the very near future, absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, one more is about, you, you talk about uh, experiences as well, and, and one thing you, you obviously don't do in your presentations is sort of compare that with hotels. Hmm. Do, we, do we see the VR experiences that are rising to actually match the hotel uh, piece? Because that's something we discussed with Jeremy as well from Breezeway, talking about the qualities and we're still struggling building that because the expectations are higher. Yeah, I think um, I think that there's a that there's a general rising tide uh, amongst uh, amongst all of the the VR community in terms of needing to compete with hotel-like experiences. And uh, and I think you know clearly this is a lovely hotel to stay in. And when you go from here to uh, to perhaps what used to be the the more shabby chic type vacation rental experience, for most people it doesn't cut it anymore, right? And I think that we are seeing a general movement into uh, people needing to complete, compete uh, with that on an experience level. Um, the amenities will help drive that, but uh, yeah, it's almost like the wow factor of what needs to happen in vacation rentals, I think is something that's very hot at the moment. And we still have a lot of work to do. We still have a lot of work to do. Have Thank you, Gavin Gray from Verbo.